Hey, it's Olin. Hi. <laughs> hey, everyone. Hello. Hello. Cody, you're uh, you've got a new camera angle. I, I'm a I'm a chunky boy with bad audio. That's that's what I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, computer won't connect to the internet, so this is fun. This is what happens when you're not on your computer for four days. Or something <laughs> like that. This all you've been doing is playing Halo on your. Mm -hmm. So you don't figure this stuff out earlier. Yeah. And yet you have not beat Halo. I have not. Yeah. Am I the only one? I just nope, beat it Justin like 20 minutes beating. ago. Did, did you see what I was talking about? Like after you get to those last few missions, you're like locked in. Yeah. Yeah. It gets very narrow. It, it was very frustrating because I just wanted to play around with my new toys. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I've, I've been, been having a lot of fun. Yeah, I've been having a lot of fun exploring the world. So, yeah, could you as you guys have seen, stuff. yeah, from just like the random pictures and shit that I find, like the fucking, I don't know if it's a Thanksgiving or a cookout reference or what, or whatever, but whether they have like all the cooked Thanksgiving turkeys and shit. Oh, yeah. I looked if at that picture. If there's Thanksgiving again. cookies, I would assume it's not a cookout. I would assume it's Thanksgiving. I said turkeys. You said Thanksgiving turkeys. You said. You said oh, I specifically. You said turkeys. No. It could be ham. I don't know. That one picture you sent of, like, the bonfire with, like, the turkey almost holding up that, like, pole. Um, it kind oh, of looked yeah. like that. What is there's like a statue to the unknown soldier? It kind of reminded me of that. Oh, I didn't even think about that. But yeah, okay. no, there's a bunch of little Easter east, east eggs all over the place. I, nice. I did find the Arbiter doll. That was cute. Oh, did you? And yeah. And I found um, the Echo doll as well somewhere, some other peak. Yeah, they like to put, uh, put things in high places. Mm -hmm. I think that. Is that the one that I found today? Which one has the um Which one has the um It looks like Master Chief, but it has like a little circle thing on its eye, like a little sniper thing. Oh, I haven't found that one. I found that one. I'm, Cody knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. I put it in the chat. Yeah, I, I don't know what it's like who that's supposed to be though. Oh, is it June? That's probably who it's supposed to be. The sniper. Oh, may yeah, I think you might be right. I didn't. I thought it was this Master Chief with a funky helmet. Honestly, when I first saw it, so a lot of little Easter eggs scattered around. I haven't seen a lot yeah. of them because I've just been beelining the main story because I don't really care for the open world stuff. Yeah. Why is that? Um... Like just Halo or open world in general. Oh, just the the way they did the open world. Um, like, I'd rather just play a Halo story game rather than have all the open world stuff. So, like, it was fine, but I just didn't engage with it much. Um, I'm a big fan of the audio log thing. I loved that in the first division. Absolutely loved running the thing. So I, the fact that they did it in this is just like, a sweet spot for me so it's just like let's go find all the audio logs oh I mean, and look here's the skull like you know what i mean like yeah. you know, you're looking around but... the the audio logs thing that's that's not like that goes way back like they uh, that for some reason this is not the oldest example i can think of but it makes me think of like bioshock infinite like that was a thing like it, it goes way the hell well, back yeah. dude yeah yeah, I it thought... is always cool to hear that, though, like to hear the, the story from the character's perspective. Yeah, maybe that's why I didn't like the plot that much. It's because I didn't listen to a lot of the audio logs because I thought they were boring. I. Here's. Are we just going to dive into Halo now? Yeah. Or do we want to save it? for? OK, I guess we're just diving into it right away. I haven't seen a doc, so I don't know what we're doing today. Okay, that's fair. Um, I, mean, so, I, I was going to read it before the show. But yeah. So Halo, here's what I liked about Halo's campaign. It was a fine campaign. Like, I, I had no major issues with the campaign. The story was okay. Here's why I liked it. It 
without without giving anything away, without any spoilers. I like the synchronized drinks there, boys. That was nice. Oh, yeah. Um. <laughs> anyway, it kind of soft undid some of the shit that annoyed me about four and five. And what I mean by that is not like it didn't like all of a sudden retcon the 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 plot lines from Halo four and five. It didn't do that. But it set up the future story in a way that a good chunk of what happened in 4 and 5 is no longer important to Master Chief moving forward. And so we're not in this constant thing where I'm worried about the shitty stories they told in the last two games. And they did it in a way that didn't feel lore unfriendly. It felt it, it still fit in with the previous stories, but... Now that's done. We don't need to fucking worry about it. They tied it up with a little bow. They left it open-ended enough that there's still questions to be answered that they can explore if they choose to. But, like, we're no longer tied to Locke's bullshit or any of that. Like, I don't got to worry about that now. I don't got to worry about all that shit. That makes me happy. Yeah, I do feel like uh, having finished the campaign now, it, it felt definitely the most exciting in the last three missions or so and i got pretty into it and then the way that they ended it felt very promising like they could do something interesting moving forward with it even if i felt like this campaign was kind of just a slog for the most part i would say the first two-thirds of it i just didn't really care or really understand what the point of anything was it was a lot of go here blow up this glowy object for the first the first good chunk of the campaign, but the I would say I would agree with you. Yeah, the last bit was more felt more coherent. It, it felt more like playing. It felt more like playing Halo Three. Yeah. Than the first than the first good chunk of the story. So I, I'd say I agree with that. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Have they said what they're planning to do for future content? Are they going to release like full? standalone campaign stuff that i don't know i i assume so like is is it here's my question because it's set up this way did they set it up to be a single player live service without it being a single player live service like they set it up to do that without <laughs> saying it because they've said that halo infinite's going to be around for like what they did they literally ten say plan. 10 years yeah yeah they have a 10-year plan for it so with an open world like this, they are going to have to add story to the campaign. Because if it's 10 years, yeah, you're not going to live on that in just the multiplayer. Like, sorry, you're not. So it's a, a live service without being announced as a live service. But I'm actually OK with that in this in this situation. Yeah, I, th I think this could be a really good example where um, instead of getting brand new games every like year or two, that just start from scratch, they could just use this as a base and just add more content as, you know, downloadable content in the future rather than make a whole new game for it every time. Like if Destiny hadn't fucked up their original campaign. Yeah, got you. <laughs> yeah. Promising, very promising. Yeah, something I've noticed while playing is that there's obviously a lot more, because they've openly come out and said that they cut out two-thirds of the open world, right? And you can literally look at the edge of the map and see more shit, like, across the way, basically. And so I just have a feeling that's just going to be slowly unlocked, and I also think that that's the reason why there's a lack of biomes in the game, is because they had to cut all that shit out. What I mean, I was going to tell you about this earlier. I, I really wish the game had. I would love to see them add, if this is possible. I don't know. A di dynamic weather system later on. Yeah, that would be great. Because it's literally just like a day night cycle, which is nice. But like, there's not even clouds. Like it's just a blue sky or a black sky. You know, it's pretty. It's pretty bare bones. Um, there and, are clouds, and, but they're static. Yeah, like it's just, it's literally just a blue or black skybox. Is really yeah. Yeah, dynamic so, weather adds a lot to any open world experience, I think, even if it's just aesthetic. Absolutely. Right. So, yeah, that's just kind of one of my wish list things for it. Um, I will say, so just so you guys are aware, I'm at the 
I haven't gotten gone in, but I'm at the part where I'm supposed to get into the control tower. Okay. Like the main control tower or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I will say that the the cutscene before you leave the AA gun island, because that's what it basically ends up being. Yeah. Uh when when Master Chief kneels down and there's just that gigantic boom. Like they like the, the attention to detail on that made me really enjoy the story even more. Like to like really put it into perspective like how big and heavy this motherfucker is. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, like was, I know was, exactly was, was the moment cool. you're talking about. Yeah. You just like, see yeah. the gravity of that suit. And then uh, you think yeah. back to him getting like thrown through a tree and you're like, holy shit, how did someone throw him? He's so heavy. Oh, not not only throw him, straight up bitch smack his ass. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. So I it's, it's been a fun while. I'll say like some of my favorite story moments have been um, stuff like that, like stuff that's just chief doing chief things. Like some of his freaking one-liners in even some of the audio logs, like um, I think Cody, you and me may have talked about this, or maybe it was you, Justin, I can't remember, but there's an audio log where somebody asks chief what the banished are doing, and he says, making a mistake. Nice. <laughs> like, very chief. Yeah. That's just fucking great. Yeah, it's yeah. They do a very good job in audio logs. There's also another one where they're telling Chief, they're like, "Hey, the Banish have breached the hall." Blah blah blah. They're in the like the the engine, the bay or something like that. And they're like, "What are we gonna do?" And he and he's just it's just very like straight to the point. Clear them out. Like just just he's just like we're just gonna fucking kill everybody. That's what very we're gonna do. Forward. What else will we do? Yeah, it's just, <laughs> and it's just very like the conviction when he says it. Of this is gonna fucking happen. It's just, it's just so satisfying. There's never the a voice acting in this game in his voice ever. It's always right. a statement. The, the, yeah, it, it the voice acting in the game overall is is very good. I, I I've been enjoying it, like the cutscenes and stuff like that. So, um, it's honestly it's just a really good game, even with all the like nitpick stuff and whatnot. Now I wish I had this. I wish I had that. Like it's just a solid experience and overall. I turn on some music because that is my only like real real complaints about the world right now is there'll be times I'm like exploring and looking for little is Easter eggs and stuff like that and like there's no sound there's you don't no like animals the, the there's sound no of music. the banshee whoosh, constantly it's not even that around. like I'm not I'm just it's literally the sound of the grapple hook of me constantly grapple hooking you know what I mean like that's what I got so I turn on the music and just and then once I turn on the music, though, I turn on music. I've been listening to, like, Christmas lo-fi, and I'm just running around and killing grunts and whatnot and just having a good time. Even in Legendary. I have not gotten frustrated once, even playing Legendary. Have you guys seen the uh, the tower? There's a tower where... Um, and I don't know if the comms towers are randomized or not, but I found one where like the grunt voice coming from the tower is is doing the halo theme going dun, dun, oh, dun, yeah. nah. I've seen that. and he goes yeah, i yeah. hate that song <laughs> it's, like, it's so freaking good fucking yeah. great dude all the enemy dialogue these grunts might notch. be my favorite grunts ever and that's saying something have you seen have you seen the one where they figure out that uh master chief's first name is john mm -hmm. and they start going off about how they're losing to a dude named fucking john <laughs> they're so pissed off about i haven't it. seen that uh... yet it's super funny. It's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I I don't know. Was there something specific on the dock that we were trying to hit? I don't. I'm not. Or are you just talking no, about this? Just chatting experience? about it. Just um, talking about Halo in general. I definitely got frustrated and knocked it down to normal. Um, because I just got sick of dying as much. Really? Mm-hmm. I mean, that's fair. I died a lot in that final stretch. Those last few like boss fights. Yeah, dude. Oh my gosh. For the love of God. <laughs> so many enemies, dude. So many enemies. But it it was super satisfying though. Like I, I will say, like the the encounter design in Halo is probably the best in any Halo game. Yeah, it is really good. Yeah. Like it, which is impressive given even even the encounters in the open world that you run into, like, yeah, they're slightly rng but they're always like they feel they don't feel that way 
So I don't know. Hmm. Uh, what do you guys think? Is the campaign worth buying? Is the campaign what? Worth buying? I would say so. I'd, I would have bought, just on the campaign alone, I would have paid $60 for this game. Yeah. I would not have. I agree. I'm glad it's on really? Game Pass. I would not pay $60. I'd be, I'd be, I mean, I might buy it, but I'd be very disappointed with just the campaign for $60. Okay, but let's say it was just a traditional Halo game. Let's say we forget that the multiplayer is free to play, right? And the whole thing was $60, just like any other Halo game. Then I think it would be worth my money. Because I think outside of 4 and 5, there are campaigns that I would just pay $60 for. But like, I think this is probably the first game I've... The first Halo game in a decade since reach which was 2010 right 2010 2011 way back literally a decade this is the first one that i i would happily pay 60 dollars for again and i i didn't mind four a ton i didn't love the story of four but the the combat was fine i hate i hate five five is terrible i like to pretend five didn't exist <laughs> which is why i'm glad infinite does <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah man love that yeah, I, I I'd pay sixty dollars for it for sure. It, but I think I feel like as of right now, I'm getting the most out of it out of the three of us because I I'm spending a lot of time in the open world and not just story content. I actually feel like I might have more hours in it than you do, though. How many hours do you guys you have might. in the game? Because uh, I, no I clocked in I under know? nine hours, I think, at completion. I don't. Can, is there a way to check how many you have in just the campaign? Um, I saw it somewhere. I can't remember if it was like in the Xbox app somewhere or what. Because in the Xbox app, it told me I have like twenty. When I looked the other day, I had twenty-two hours total. But I don't know if that's counting multiplayer and campaign. Although mm -hmm. I will say, I do believe I've probably played more campaign than I have multiplayer. So I definitely played more campaign at this point than I have multiplayer. <laughs> I I spend an ungodly amount of time just now flying around in Lost, just looking for shit. You know what I mean? Just like exploring the map and just seeing different areas and stuff. Um, yeah, I just didn't find it that rewarding to explore. Like even the little like the doll Easter eggs or whatever. Like they're kind of neat, but meh. And all the like I, I weapon have... skins were for multiplayer and stuff were not interesting either. So if you go to load game, there's four slave slots, four slave slots, save slots. Um, What's a slave and, slot, Cody? Or is there something you're not telling us? I mean, master slave hard drives, you know, you know how it is. No, old school. Yeah. Anyways, um, I currently have 17 hours in and 63% complete with the campaign. So... so. And I feel like, yeah, I'll probably clock this in at 25 hours, which I think is what we talked about before it released. Yeah, somewhere in there, like 25 to 30, we were guessing. Yeah, yeah, which, I mean, and that's if I continue to, like, look for skulls and stuff. If I decide to beeline the story, I'll probably finish it. Mm -hmm. Kind of thing, so. Um, so that's fun. Uh, is my Xbox not connecting to the internet now either? Tim, did great. you ever find well, a skull? Any skulls? Tim, hmm? did you ever find any skulls? I have not found any skulls. I found I three. I'm having. I, I I like. I haven't been going out of my way looking for them, so I haven't like looked up where any are or anything like that. But no, I have not found any. They're definitely. And I feel like by sheer luck, I should have found one by now. Yeah, there have been the ones that I found. It's usually like, hmm, I wonder if something's over there. But then, of course, they're like, I found three, but there are like 20 other places that I've spent time like climbing up this thing forever and there's nothing there. Yeah, there's a lot of that. And I, I honestly, having the Hornet really uh, helps expedite a lot of that stuff. Hornet, boss. I keep thinking Hornet. I forget. I don't know why. Because the Hornet, I mean, was, Hornet what it was called and Wasp before, are right? synonyms. So. Yeah, but I, I, think, I think, think it was. I think they're. I, I think there is a hornet. I feel like they're yeah. different vehicles. 
Yeah. I think the Hornet's bigger. I think, I think the, the Hornet, hornet is yeah. that has, it's somewhere between a pelican and a wasp in terms of size. Yeah, I think the, the one where the two marines get on, on each side. side. Yeah, where the two yeah. what get on the Ridge. side? Marines. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's just a good Jesus. There's a lot of uh, achievements on here that not very many people have uh, unlocked. Ooh, what's your yeah. rarest one that you've got? The, one, the rarest one I have on the, that mm-hmm. I've done? Um, that's a good question. I just fired up Halo to check and see how much time I have in this campaign save. So if I go to... Uh, no, not continue. Go to load game, you said? Mm-hmm. That's where you yeah. turn the skulls on if you have any. Yeah, 19 hours. Oh yeah, I'm clocked in at yeah. 19 hours right now. So I'm a little lower than I thought. I thought I was like maybe around 20 ish. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I'm definitely not gonna. I mean, I guess I could complete the game in 19 hours, but I I doubt it. I think you're closer than you think you are. Well, that would require me to continue the story. Is more what I'm getting at, and I'm probably oh. not going. I'm probably gonna run around and do other shit because I still have like <laughs> other bases and shit to. Um, fight. Oh, you know I, I, mean? I did find out that uh, you absolutely can keep, like keep playing after you beat the, which is nice. which makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. Well, like it wouldn't be the first time that I thought it would make sense, and then that wasn't the case. Looking at you, Fallout Three pre fucking oh, DLC. Man. Yep. Uh, oh wow, there's 15 high value targets. I didn't realize that. I hadn't looked at the achievements at all. Yeah, I'm so. looking at them right now as well. I see uh, there's a rare one that you get for reviving three allies in an elimination round in a match made game. That's it. Uh, seems like it would be yeah. kind of difficult. That's not a thing. <laughs> yeah, elimination, elimination round. Uh, yeah, that's not a game no. type. <laughs> yeah, it's not. Not yet. So the oh. the rarest one I have right now, the rarest one I have. Is no one left behind? Answered all UNSC distress calls. Two point seven nine percent of gamers unlocked this. Mm. So, I don't know. I have so far. I have sixty six achievements in this game somehow. Uh, this is more than me. My rarest achievement, but it's my favorite one that I have. Um, passing the gas, killed a grunt that's that- been thrown by a brute. What? That's hilarious. Yeah, actually, That's it was really amazing. funny when I got this too because I was listening to um, they were uh doing an interview. Three four three was, and uh, they were literally talking about how brunt or how brutes can throw grunts. As a brute picked up this grunt and shucked it at me, <laughs> I was like, "Whoa!" That's hilarious. <laughs> so my my rarest achievement is uh. Uh, yeah, fight hard, die well, which is finish the campaign on heroic. Nice. What percentage yeah, have done that? that has, uh, Only. Like yeah, it's it's one point six four percent. It's wow. actually lower. When Cody and I were talking on the phone earlier, and it's lower than I thought it was. Oh my god. So like, I guess there's a lot of people playing through on normal right now. Although. Yeah, normal is only four point six six percent. Is this just the things being skewed because it's on Game Pass? Yeah, I do think that is part of it. I was just thinking about that because all it takes is somebody to log in once to then add another person to the total, right? You know what I mean? So, um, but is it four point? Well, it says of gamers. Is it talking about of gamers who play Halo though? That's the I'm question. <laughs> yeah, or is it just talking I mean, about look, of gamers in general? Scan all seven four runner four runner artifacts has a point eight eight percent completion completion percentage. I haven't found any. I think I have three. Artifacts. It's the rings. Oh, I got you. Pretty sure I yeah. have seen them around a bit. Uh, there's only point three seven percent of gamers who have destroyed all forty banished uh, propaganda towers. I know what I'm doing after the fucking stream today. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking out Destroying the banished propaganda my, towers? My, my, and my computer doesn't fucking work, so <laughs> fuck it. Big Xbox hours. Go ahead. Yeah, dude. I'll be up all goddamn night playing that shit. Yeah. And I'm going shopping for my wife and children tomorrow for their Christmas presents. There you go. 
Um, did you guys oh. see that glitch that lets you play split screen on the Series S? Yeah. I saw it very soon, but I didn't uh, uh, read it yet. Yeah, it's wacky. Um, it basically, you uh, sign in with two Xbox accounts, and in the main menu of the game, you have your friend like join your party locally and then go into it, and it's like glitchy co op. Uh, split screen, uh, but it's like really bugged out where the second player doesn't have any HUD and like the lighting doesn't display properly. And if either of you dies, you just get booted back out to the main menu. <laughs> but uh, it's kind oh, of in fuck. there. So, I mean, who needs a HUD? Hardcore mode. <laughs> I mean, right. We're all going to play Lasso, right? Oh, God. I've never. Right? I've never either, but this is. I think. I, I'm going to be honest. Like, this is by far the easiest legendary difficulty I've ever played. Mm. And I, I and I think I don't remember if I tweeted this out on the old Twitter or my personal Twitter or whatever. But the the uh freedom to approach things as you want makes the game so much easier, even on the harder difficulties, than it did in the older Halos. Or like you guys were just talking about earlier with the final levels and stuff get becoming very hard because you're you're bottled in, right? But like the rest of the time, when you're out in the open world and shit, you're like, "Oh, that dude just killed me when I did this. Let me go get the fucking scorpion real quick and just end this." You know what I mean? Like, oh. it, 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 you can just do whatever, or you can do what some people are doing. They're taking like the volatile uh, skewers and putting a load enough the Marines in the Razorback. And if you park and just look a certain direction, the, and there's enemies there, the Marines will shoot them. So you're like an artillery. Oh my and god! And wherever you look, they, they'll they'll fire. That's amazing. So, like, so there's just there's so many different ways to approach each encounter, especially in the open world, that it makes it easy. Mm. Um, but I, one of the things I've really enjoyed that's made the game a little bit more fun for me is like, uh, like using a pulse rifle. I talked to Tim about this earlier. Using a pulse rifle against an elite because it affects their shields instead of just using the battle rifle. You know what I mean? Because that doesn't do as much damage to shields and stuff like that. Like. Playing yeah, that the game, different energy types, yeah, right. Um, I feel like it's just much more important in this game because you could you could fight a group of enemies that have grunts, jackals, elites, and brutes. Oh, and there's a banshee. So how do you tackle all of those things at the same time? You know what I mean? And it's just yeah, all about weapon choices and stuff like that or whatever. So I've and definitely your abilities. Yeah, I've definitely felt that each enemy you kind of have to like take a different tact against especially the fucking uh jackals with their shields man i've definitely been undone yeah. by a bunch of jackals before and their kill shots when they fucking turn it sideways and do Dude. this or whatever like gangster like it's way harder yeah it's way harder to hit that well it's been i i've gotten better at it but it's harder to hit that gap when it's up instead mm -hmm. of on the side like it's been for the past fucking right 20 years <laughs> all of the right, muscle memory you know I mean? of shooting them in the side yeah just yeah, so it's just yeah, I don't know. Um, um I don't know. It's just it's really enjoyable. Yeah, and I, I will say that it is really cool that you like in the old games it felt like they would kind of set you up with the weapons that they would like expect you to need to get through the level. Um but right. here, uh there's definitely one part where I was coming to fight this uh an elite like sword using character and uh there's like this jump that you have to go up. And I was using a turret, and I was like, oh, I can't jump up there with my turret. Dang. I guess I'll have to jump up there and then harpoon it back up to me so I can keep my turret. And uh, I just... The fight started. I hit the shoot button, and then he died. It was great. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's good mm -hmm. times. Yeah, it's, it's a, yeah, the game's a lot of fun. I don't know. We can talk about Halo all night, though. Is there something else we have in the chat to talk about? <laughs> Yes, uh, we can talk about some other things. Um, have you guys been watching the Xbox Power On documentary that they've been putting out in episodes? Yeah. I finished it. Bit, yeah. I actually kept I, I, I kept at, meaning to ask you guys to watch it because I did want to talk about it. It's pretty cool. I haven't been able to watch it all the way through. I've seen like bits and pieces. So Yeah, I've seen like the first uh, two parts of it. Um, and it's really interesting seeing that sort of like insight into the inner workings of uh, hardware development, especially talking about those yeah. meetings with Bill Gates and him getting really pissed off and shit. Yeah, yeah. It's it's um, 
Honestly, the best part of the series for me is when they explain what caused the red rings for the 360. You want to kind of go into that a little bit? Yeah, what did Yeah, it? well, it's actually it's actually a really simple explanation. Uh when you turn on your Xbox and you play it for a while, it gets hot. Right? And then you turn it off and you stop playing and the metal gets cold. So that was happening with the processor chip and it would expand and contract, expand and contract, expand and contract. And after it did that so many times, the pins started breaking. Oh. Uh, so it was just like, right. Well, they went with their own uh, silicone, like their own board kind of thing. And I think that played a little bit of a part into it. Um, but yeah, it's just like, you it's can't magic. really fix it unless, and, and other than, just coming up with a better processor that can just handle that stuff more. Um, but yeah, like they, they, it's very behind the curtain, no holds barred. Um, they talk about how they regret how they handled uh, Lionhead Studios, you know, the people Dude. who made Fable. Oh man, you know, that made me cry. They should yeah. regret that because they killed Black and White and so many Fable. good franchises. Look at Peter Molyneux now, yeah. he's just a maniac. They could have reined him in. To be fair, I think he was probably always a maniac, we just didn't know. <laughs> um, yeah i they do talk about how the lessons they learned from lionhead though is what's driven them to do what they do now with their studios and stuff um and but they the one of the people in the interview straight up says i really wish lionhead was still a viable studio like they're very you can tell that at least that person is very regretful for what how it went down yeah, you know I, mean? so. I really liked that part where they kind of talked about, like, the two examples that I think were perfect is they talked about how with both Lionhead and Rare, they basically took those studios and they were like, all right, this is what you're doing now. You're doing Connect now. Make these Connect games. And Rare ended yeah. up being okay and coming through the other side, doing, like, cameo elements of power, going on to do Sea of Thieves. They got their stuff together and... Xbox was like, all right, yeah, we're just going to support you doing your thing instead of trying to get you to do this other thing, which doesn't make sense for you to do as a studio. And unfortunately, Lionhead right. just didn't pull through the same way. Yeah, they talked about how Fable, I believe it's Fable Legends, which was like the Kinect game, uh, was a big passion project that a lot of people wanted to work on and stuff like that. Um but on the other side of this, they also talk about how, you know, they're very transparent about how the Xbox didn't, the Xbox One didn't, like, they went the wrong direction. You know what I mean? Me, um, you think? That. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, you know what they, you know how they start that? They start that, they start that episode with the cut up of how many times they say TV. Like, they bash themselves hard about the whole thing. So I don't know if I'm cutting it in and out every time you guys freeze. If I am, I apologize. Oh, you're good. You're, free, um, you're, you're freezing steady. on my your phone. On, your so... audio's been fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what that's where I was worried. About. Like I have uh, noticed your video lock up a couple times, but it hasn't been distracting, and your audio's fine. Okay, good. All right, I was worried about my audio because I know my audio is always cut. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's they're like they're very like harsh on themselves for what they've done. Uh, it, well, what happened in the past and stuff. But they do end it, obviously, on a high note with Game Pass, right? Um, I mean, and I, I don't blame them. Like, they have every right to. I mean, you could you could make a very... Well, I don't even think it's really an argument. Xbox had the strongest 2021 out of the three major uh, competitors, right? Um, not, not I would say they so. certainly, compared to the other two, gained the most ground. I think right. PlayStation had a very solid 2021, good releases killer right. sales the switch did switch things obviously just outsold everything because mm -hmm. of the fucking switch but yeah i would say game pass yeah xbox has gained the most ground on the other two by a long shot so yeah i think I th game pass is the only innovation we've really seen recently right and that's like a huge yeah. jump in what we're doing for gaming right um i i want to say i guess i should say they they just to kind of build on what you're saying, they they gain the most ground. They just have the most goodwill with consumers, I feel like, at this point. Um, just because the Game Pass, while it, like, the gunk, I guess, they didn't come out to very good reviews or whatever, there have been a lot of really, really good games that have released on Game Pass. You can put Halo in that category. You got Forza. 
Jack for Blood's Psychonauts. pretty popular. You know what I mean? Psychonauts too. You know what I mean? Like, and they're and they're only coming out with more. Like the end of this year was really just kind of like the beginning of their like quarterly big release that they're trying to do every quarter. They're trying to have a major game come out. That's like, and so and if they continue to deliver. Even if we're going by Metacritic score, Metacritic scores, which Halo got an 86, Halo Infinite did, and its user score review actually recovered from the review bombing. It's like oh, an nice. 8.6 or an 8.8 .8 or something like that, um, which they're very in line with each other. Like people are pretty happy with it. But if they, if you can consistently get an 85 on a Metac, like as a Metacritic score, and you're only paying ten dollars a month to acquire those games, like it's, I. I can't really beat it, you know what I mean? And that does that's not even including them adding like older games like Stardew Valley and whatnot. It just doesn't you know what I mean? It's just an easy sell. I, I even though I still can't get some people to get it that I know. It'd be like it's one dollar, dude. Like if, if you have it. an Xbox, it doesn't make sense to not have it. It really doesn't. If right, you have a PC, you end up paying it more, really right? Make sense to not have it. Or you pay like Sorry. just as much just to have Xbox Gold as you would if you were paying for Game Pass, right? Yeah, Gold is still nine ninety nine. So like, uh, Game Pass Ultimate is fifteen bucks, which gets you everything yeah. on PC and Xbox, and just regular Game Pass is yeah the same price as it's the exact same price as Gold. Goofy. Yeah, like I. It, I, they should just get rid of gold and just have Game Pass. Just pay ten bucks, get your gold, right? Didn't they try? To and, I mean, that? it pretty much is because I don't think there's anybody who just has gold anymore. I actually just saw deals on on just gold uh, of it, like just buying gold cards, right? Or whatever. You have you have gold by having Game Pass, though. right? I understand that, but you can still buy gold separately, is what I'm saying. Like it's still viable to do that. You don't have to get Game Pass. That's dumb. But I don't. Th I I don't think that Justin, what you were referring to, I I don't think they try to get rid of game or gold. I think they tried something wonky to like hike up the price. Oh yeah, there's a price change. Pissed. Yeah, people were pissed because they're like, "Why the fuck do I gotta pay to play a free to play game on your console? Mm -hmm. Like, why do I have to pay for the internet? You used to play fucking Fortnite or something like that." And then they and then so. They then they backtracked the price hike, and they also then made it so if it's a free to play game and it requires internet, you can still play it, kind of thing. Like That's they right. Yeah. Did a complete one eighty. Yeah. So which more goodwill for needs them. to happen. Right. So I mean, uh, I don't know. I just well, hey, did you did you put the stalker stuff on the dock? Because I feel like this is a good time to move over to that. When you're talking about goodwill and doing bad things, go for it. Um, are you? Okay, yeah. Uh, Soccer 2 tried to put in NFTs in their game. And uh, they got shit on. Hard. I wonder why. What did, They're uh, no longer putting NFTs in their game. What were their so, NFTs going to be? Uh, so, from what I understood, you could buy an NFT to be the face of an NC NPC. Or, like, oh. own a desk. or oh, own like the uh, actual like, assets? Yeah, yeah, but like for the NPCs, the way it was explained seemed to be um, that if you bought an NPC, you could get your face put in the game. Is oh. what the description I read. But yeah, they also it was had an NFT. NFT for them to make you into a fucking N <laughs> NPC, which is just like, yeah, why? Yeah, it, yeah, I don't, I don't understand it. But yeah, they got shit on, and so now they're not putting NFTs in their game anymore. Yeah, that so, checks out. <laughs> yay for not putting them in the game anymore. Yeah, I mean, I give Boo them for give the them, fact that the rest of this is happening. Yeah, I give them credit for at least listening to the backlash because people are like, I don't want this. I don't care if it doesn't affect the gameplay or anything like that. Like, you want more money, figure out a different way to do it because mm -hmm. nobody wants to fucking deal with the season games. Um, but the fact that the game industries are going are trending this way. You know who's next? Is fucking EA. They're gonna NFT the NFL players. Oh, these fucking oh Madden I, Madden cards. that's just the next ultimate team. That's not even a yes. yeah. That's that's not even like a bold prediction. Like that's just gonna happen. Yeah, it's it's awful, absolutely awful. <sighs> yeah, it's a strange 
the whole NFT thing is very strange. I like the idea of like these unique items in games, but uh, everything else surrounding that, like, I don't know, it could just be unique to the game and not backed up by the blockchain. Yeah. Like the idea of fucking, uh, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's, I feel like I, I would be, um, I feel like I'd have to eat a lot of crow if all of a sudden I was cool with all, with, with a, uh, a false scarcity, right? A forced <laughs> scarcity. And this is like it to the extreme because there is no goddamn reason why let's, let me just shit on Ubisoft for a second. There's no fucking reason to sell a helmet in game with fucking inscription on it. Like you couldn't reproduce this anywhere. This belongs to you and only you and no one else will fucking have this ever. Why? 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 It's a, f why you can just so much why i don't and the answer is because people will buy it i don't yeah i i hate it this i hate that we live here i hate this planet i hate this species can i don't understand this unleash the flood just let let them loose i don't care anymore so yeah, I, I i will say the only good thing for nf about nfts for me anyways is because I I uh, invest in Ethereum and Ethereum is what's used to validate NFTs and it's proven the Ethereum model works. So like that's why Ethereum's price has gone up so high over the past year. Um, it went from like four hundred or something dollars to now it's it's been its high has been like four thousand nine hundred dollars per coin. You know what I mean? So like if you invested in that and kind of that kind of thing, you've seen a good return. Uh, but NFTs, I don't know, like. I do. I don't think NFTs are going away. I just don't think the video game space is the correct place for them. Um, I think that they're gonna they're gonna stay, and that's kind of the problem because, like Justin said, somebody's willing to buy it. I mean, you have you guys heard about the fucking land being sold in fucking video games? No. Yeah, there's it. There's a bunch of weird shit going on right now, and I don't really know what to think of it. And honestly, I haven't read enough about it to really give a great opinion. But like, yeah, people are selling land in video games and unreleased video games hmm. for hundreds of thousands of dollars. <laughs> and I don't, under, like I, the, I like, I literally don't understand. It. Sounds like the Final Fantasy fourteen housing market, but people are paying real money. <laughs> oh man! And before Speaking Jeff Bezos realizes he can just put that in New World. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> That's true. But, you know, speaking of Final Fantasy, um, I don't know if this is on the dock either, but it was a great transition. To, you know, did you, did you hear they stopped selling their game because it's too popular? Yes, like, yes. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, people. they ran out of Steam keys. They pulled down their ads yeah. as well because they just cannot manage the number of people who are trying to play the game and log in on a daily basis. Yeah. That is incredible. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. I'm super happy for those people. Because they didn't Final Fantasy XIV have like a really shitty beginning. Yeah, they so, like, literally like <laughs> nuked the original premise of the game, and that that's why it was called a, a Realm Reborn, is because they literally started oh, yeah. over again. But that was actually really mm -hmm. cool because they like built that into the lore of the game going forward too. Um, yeah, dude, they only make correct decisions with that game pretty much. I wish all companies could just make correct decisions or mostly correct decisions with their video games. Like not putting NFTs in them. I just, it'd be nice. Don't we all miss, wish that? Yeah, that's like yeah. Uh, if people who made PC ports put all the uh, options that PC gamers want in the settings for those ports. Like Final Fantasy VII, which just came out on PC oh on the Epic Games launcher. Yeah. Apparently, um, there aren't too many issues with it, but there are some things that people are kind of upset about. Um, the settings, you know, on a PC game, you expect to have, like, a fucking lengthy list of things that you can fuck around with to optimize it for your PC. But it looks like uh, Final Fantasy VII is missing a lot of them. And people are kind of upset about it, looking at that $70 price tag. 
Yeah, I mean, seventy dollars, not all options. I'd be mad too. <laughs> like, it's pretty simple here. That's not the only reason people are upset though about it, because it's also just another uh, Epic Store exclusive. Yeah, I'm sure that factors into it too. Yeah. Hmm. We'll, I, we'll I see don't know. Like Epic is. Yeah, Epic isn't like making any money on anything. Like, oh God, no, <laughs> they're losing so much money on the Epic Store. Yeah, what, Hilarious. Did, did, is it Tom Sweeney or Tim Sweeney? I don't remember. Tim. Tim. Okay. Yeah. So didn't he say like Epic wouldn't be fucking profitable for like seven years or yeah. like ten years or some shit like that? Yeah. Like, the Epic Store what? will not make money for a long time. Well, yeah, I'm sure. So they the have only reason money from their engine. Yeah, I was gonna say the only reason they can afford that is Unreal Engine. They there was no fucking way they could do it if they didn't already have such a strong foothold with that. Ooh, did you, have you guys played the Matrix demo? That's it's what not- I was gonna ask. No, I haven't played it. Neither have I. I haven't played it yet either. I've been playing too much Halo. Played what? The Unreal Five Matrix demo thing. Oh, not yet. I really want to though. Yeah, I've heard I definitely it's want to download that and give it a whirl. Um, the only well, reason you know, I have the Epic Store installed is because I have started like actually logging in every month to get free games in the library, <laughs> even though it's like I don't uh, play those games Tim's and I own backlog. some of them already. And it's just, you know, if they're going to give it away, I, I mean, I might as well. Yeah, I have a couple of games on there. Tony Hawk. When I, I die, Hawk give my me. games to my kids. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, no. Uh, what was I going to say? Um. And you know what's funny about the Unreal Engine 5 stuff is during the Game Awards, we were not impressed when we first saw it. We were like, meh. No. Like, meh. But then everybody's like, you need to fucking, fucking do it. Do it now. You know what I mean? Like, just try it. And I guess I didn't really think about it. Like, if that was full-blown game engine and it's that close, like, side by side, I've seen, I've seen the pictures now. Side by side, it is literally movie quality. And it's very, like, the, the, the step from the movie to the video game is very small. Like there's a difference, but it's not very big. Um, I feel like, I feel like, uh, well, I barely remember the matrix demo from the game awards, if I'm being honest, but I feel like we were relatively impressed. I just think we were just so goddamn obsessed (laughs) with space Marine that we just didn't care. Mm, Speaking of everybody who's watched that space Marine video, I don't know if there's extra people here today because of that, but I don't care. A lot of fucking people watch that video, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, thanks for watching reaction. our giddy reaction. A little reaction. Yeah, we're just being nerds, and you guys are like, let's all watch these guys be nerds. And it's like, cool. <laughs> like, I appreciate you watching that video. <laughs> Everyone had that same energy. 10,000 yeah, people had that time. same energy. Oh, it's um, over that. Last time I looked, it was at 15K. Nice. Oh yeah, it's at it's at like sixteen now. Yeah. At least earlier um, today it was at sixteen. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. Um I know that was a sequel. Uh, but my, there's a my audio just cut out. Uh oh. I'm back. Welcome back. Uh did you guys see there's gonna be a Splinter Cell remake? I did. Yes, did you I guys did. ever play Splinter Cell? I uh I never really played it myself, but everyone I know is big fan. Oh dude, you would love you would love Splinter Cell. I think you'd like it too. Yeah, dude, I love. But Ubisoft games. is gonna fuck it up. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna hard. make a live service, open world, map marker driven. They're gonna Ubisoft thing. It up. They're they're gonna they're gonna make it so you have to buy the image of his gun. <laughs> no, you have to buy the the night vision goggles. Oh, yeah. Man. Oh yeah. Oh, I forgot in the original. And Spurs they'll have a custom inscription. Oh, they'll have a custom inscription. They're your night vision goggles. You could take them with you and a ghost recon. You know what? I probably just gave them a di- an idea that they'll do. That's terrible. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not. Like, I would be excited, but Ubisoft has not been making good moves lately. Far Cry 6 was meh. Ghost Recon Breakpoint was bad. And that's been the two big yeah. releases uh, over the past couple of years. Oh, and then you have the, oh, hell. the Rainbow Six. Ra- Rainbow Six. Uh, Oh, their their spin-off game for Rainbow Six that just yeah. looks like garbage now. Yeah. 
Yeah, that nobody wants. I mean, now Valhalla was was okay, but I like I liked it, it because right. it was, but it wasn't like amazing. I just enjoyed running around England. Like it's a very beautiful game. I'll give them that. It's a great I mean, looking next gen game, and it was fun. But right. yeah, I, I think I'd agree. It, it's yeah, it's all right. So it's just uh, not very good lately. Uh, which I want to say, like about a, about a year and a half ago, I would be like, "Well, you know what? I don't mind Ubisoft because they stick with their games, and they, you know what I mean. You know, even if they come out buggy, they stick with them and they figure figure it out. Blah blah blah. They let the Division Two die. I don't know. It's just a list of things that they've been doing lately that's just not good ideas, in my opinion. What do you mean yeah. they let the Division Two die? Division Two, from what I understand, right? Because it's not like I was like really integrated in the second games community or anything like that. But it's oh. just they, they made a lot of promises that they just didn't end up delivering on. Unlike oh, the Division guess. 1, where they, where they stuck with it, you know what I mean? And they turned the Division 1 into a very good game. Uh, I guess I don't know what promises were made, because I didn't like follow the Division 2 hype train before it released. I didn't I really like, either. Bought it. Actually, I didn't even buy it. I got it with my 2600. When I bought at CPU, <laughs> I got it. <laughs> The best way to get a new yeah. game. Yeah, so just, I don't know, just not a lot of good decisions over the past couple of years, in my opinion. Yeah, well, at least they're doing something with it, unlike Konami and Metal Gear. I mean... <sighs> you know how you... we've had rumors for a very long time about all this new Metal Gear shit and all this Kojima shit, and then every time there's an opportunity for something to be announced, nothing happens? Yep. It's almost like yeah. there's nothing there or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Konami's right. not interested in doing anything with Metal Gear anymore. Well, I mean, there is a point to let everything, like, die. Or, better yet, just, like, throw it in the vault for the next 20 years and bring it back kind of thing. Yeah, you know I, I mean? think Assassin's Creed could benefit from something like that. Maybe not 20 years, Assassin's but... Assassin's Creed, Call of Duty... I don't know. Any maybe, annual maybe, game? Maybe. Yeah, basically. I would hate that for Madden, because even though Madden's garbage, I like playing Madden against him. So, I don't know. But Yeah, yeah how will I Cody just, get NFTs if, if they don't put them in Madden? <laughs> I don't play Ultimate Team. I just I just continually get disappointed by the trench. You I will when there, all of a sudden there's an actual real-world... Va- well, God, if they do that, they're already so close to getting gambling, like laws oh, yeah. thrown at them and if they actually were to start using nfts that have a real world value assigned to them then i i feel like that's the nail in their own coffin let them do it or should be <laughs> anyway let them do it put the nail on the coffin cody's uh, over here just saying i shall assist your suicide <laughs> <laughs> yes hey did you see it what is it sweden is allowing to have the at home suicide uh Assisted suicide it's, things. Oh wow! Not a gaming topic, but all right. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it was making a soul caliber reference, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a country. It's a country somewhere over there in Scandinavia. It's like Sweden, Sweden, Norway, or something like that. They're allowing people to have like assisted. Uh, all like, right. Suicide. One of those. One of those countries didn't do that, and is very offended that you just said that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember. Uh, Google it. It's, it's a thing. That's interesting. Uh, I need to go to both of those countries, so please don't hate me when I get there. <laughs> They'll remember. Please don't this. stick me in one of them. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. This random factoid. So nice. Yeah, I was um, just quoting Yoshimitsu. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, what do you guys feel? You you want to play some games after this? I would. I'm down. <laughs> but, uh, Why not? Cody's Cody? internet is broken. <laughs> No, his computer's broke. I mean, if we, if, if I, so I think we, I don't know if Ben's around, but I think we owe Ben Phasmo. Okay. So if he's, if he's updates. there, you guys should probably, yeah, the new updates, and I will watch that. If that doesn't happen, I can play Halo with you for my Xbox, and I, we'd have to do the party chat on the mm-hmm. Xbox, mm-hmm. probably. Mm-hmm. Or I'd have to do more Discord through my phone, something like that. But y'all let me know. I gotta go get the uh, kids off my wife because they fell asleep on her. <laughs> okay. So. Sounds good. Uh, that's going to be it for us for tonight. Uh, we may be back with some games. Maybe not. We'll see what happens. Uh, thanks for joining us.
Bye.